When we talk about testing, testing is just not about the terms, terminologies, the process, methods and standards. Testing is something which is practiced differently in different methodologies. And when I say methodologies, we are talking about software development lifecycle models. And yes, when we talk today about different SDLC models, the most trending one is Agile. And that's what we would like to understand in more detail in this particular playlist. So this is the very first tutorial of this playlist where we'll be talking and understanding Agile in nutshell. So we will be getting started with the very first and segment to understand what's the basics of Agile methodology, on what basic manifesto and principle does it work on, and explore a lot more beyond this in this particular playlist. So. Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Nish Kumar Singh and today we are talking about the basic introduction to the Agile methodology. Let's understand the same in more detail. In this tutorial, we will be covering a short history of software development processes, what is Agile methodology, comparison between traditional and Agile methodology. When we talk about the history of the software development process, we are going to understand that how exactly the products were developed in earlier days or traditional approaches and how exactly Agile is actually different compared to these traditional approaches. To start our story to understand about traditional approaches, the very first thing and the most proven development model in the market was waterfall model where waterfall development involved a sequence of phases which helped us to create a product and deliver to a certain extent. Now when I say certain extent, there were certain criteria which were not fulfilled due to the lack of ability to provide the necessary products at the end of the life cycle. Yes, the waterfall development included certain standard phases which were supposed to be completed at their desired positions as per the development model and then move to the next stage. So here the standard phases included requirements, design, development, testing and maintenance. As you see in the diagram it was a waterfall that moving from one stage to another and you cannot go back. So the permission to go back to a previous stage was not actually allowed. And the best part of the waterfall model was that all the related activities of a particular stage must be completed well within. That means it was also helpful in certain aspect that you complete all necessary activities at the same phase instead of coming back to it again and again. But yes, that was not all which also added some of the negative criteria to it. So we will be understanding in more detail but as it was the most proven model, sometime water development is another name for the traditional approach. When we talk in more detail, of course, you complete one phase before moving to the next phase. Here it simply means that the entry criteria to the next phase of waterfall development model was the exit criteria of the previous phase. This makes sure that all the exit criteria entities are met before entering the second phase of the life cycle. Also, you rarely aim to revisit a phase once it is completed. So we just make sure that each and every activity related to a particular phase is completed when it is defined to be covered as a part of the schedule. That means you better get whatever you are doing right the first time itself. So you don't have any hopes to go back to it. But is there any problem if doing like that? Of course, we did have a lot of problems to overcome to deliver a product some time on time or maybe when you talk about meeting the expectations of the customer was also a challenge. How was that? Let's start understanding a little more the negativity of these traditional approaches. Or we can also say that what kind of challenges we faced when working with the waterfall development model. Here, if you look at the waterfall model once again with the challenges which we had, for example, requirements, it was frozen or finalized at that point of time itself. So the changes were not entertained. And of course, the client can come back to us or the customer can always share some of the new inputs to add to the requirements. And that was not allowed. So it was very rigid in order to do certain activities. When it comes to development, of course, it used to take a longer time because that was the most important aspect considered as a part of the life cycle. 
and thus it was taking so long that sometimes lot of activities from the testing were skipped. So to be frank, it was considered to be the minimal uh, effort required to do testing on a product and then release the product. And of course, we had a lot of challenges uh, which we faced when we delivered the product to the client. Sometime you don't realize any value until the end of the projects because you don't have any kind of client interactions. You are doing a lot of activities, preparing certain documentations to make sure that everything is effective, but you never know are you going to the right way or are you going to achieve the goal at the end of the life cycle. You leave the testing until the end. So you don't have any kind of interaction right from the beginning, which might be challenging sometimes because testings are or testers are considered as effective contributors to every single phase. You don't seek approval from the stakeholders until late in the day. So yes, you don't have any kind of involvements from the different stakeholders. Thus, the collaboration and communication was also poor when it was waterfall development model. So this approach is highly risky costly and generally less efficient and that's what the most important thing what we can derive out of our traditional approaches further if we talk about some of the statistics which we collected earlier uh, which says that most of the software development failed due to the traditional approaches why because 31 percent of the software development projects are cancelled the reason was it was not going as per the way it was supposed to meet the requirements or expectations of the customer or probably the end users in fact 75 percent of the software projects are considered failures by those who initiated them so that means it was just not the customer who called off the project sometime the development organization itself called up as a failure because they were not sure where exactly they are going and they had very poor collaboration in terms of defining certain things and passing on further to different stakeholders. One in every two projects exceeds this budget by 200%. So that means double the budget which was allocated to them to do that activity that also shows that it was poorly planned and poorly designed to further continue with different activities or you spent a lot of time on unwanted things. Further talking about some, some more expectations in terms of uh, feature fall short of the expectation is very important to understand. So how many projects have you delivered that meet 100% of the client requested features? To answer this question, first of all, we should understand that how important is your requirement? Everything relies on the requirements which are provided to you and at the end of the day, no matter what you do, Maybe you create a number of documentations, maybe you have good collaboration or you have effective communication, making certain artifacts being available early in the life cycle. But at the end, all you have to do is meet the client requested features. If your product is not meeting the same, no matter what effort you would have put, what technology you would have applied and what approach you would have followed does not help. So most projects have faced the deadline rush and cut many features. So we have also observed that most of the projects due to the uh, deadline rush or coming closer to the deadline with unexpected dates and uh, not sure we are not yet done, then they have come back with saying that, okay, we will not develop these features, maybe probably in the upcoming releases. And that does not make your customer happy. Rather, today we are looking forward to make your customers more delighted than just being happy. 66% of the projects do not meet the needs of the user or have to be rewritten. So that's not a good figure and that's not a good comment. That at least more than 50% of the products are not meeting the expectations of the users or probably have to be rewritten. And that requires a lot of budget and in fact you as an organization to develop that product lose a lot of reputation. Now this was the era when in 2001 we started thinking about these problems and started analyzing that how these challenges can be overcome, how to handle the failed projects or how to handle such common challenges which we have been facing for years together. And that's where we started overcoming those challenges by following certain simple approaches and principles. You started understanding that if you put things very transparent that what is that is happening, then everyone different stakeholders within the process or the organization will be aware of what activities are going on. So transparency was one thing which was identified at a very early stage. 
And at the same time, we also understood that until unless the different stakeholders of a development project interact together, we will not be able to understand that how exactly what uh, others are doing and what is that we are supposed to plan to do further. So when you talk about development and testing organizations, development generally creates something and testing team has to test it to make sure that it is valid. And that has to be very transparent that what developers are busy doing so that we can plan according to that and find any as many defects as possible. So yes, it was just not about creating best practices. It was just about fundamental shift, moving from one stage to another and creating something which changes the history. And here we also created a lot of such comparisons which helped us to understand that what is really not important to be done as a part of the process where we waste a lot of time and maybe our customers or end users are never bothered about that or maybe not even interested to know that how you did it. So we had created a certain manifesto which shown this comparison that something over another thing is important and we give value to that. So we started creating those value outputs by analyzing those challenges and refining or I can say we redefined the outcomes in a different manner. And that's where Agile came into picture. So this was where we tried to understand that what exactly is the comparison between waterfall versus agile development. So if you talk about the waterfall, it was a serialized process. So we are just trying to compare certain parameters and understand the comparison between waterfall and agile. So if you talk about being a serialized process, it is a waterfall where a previous phase has to be completed before starting the next phase. Planning far in advance, product no longer match reality by the time they are released. So you never know what exactly happened and poor collaboration and a lot of documentation could be a reason for that. Lack of visibility, teams do not realize they are way behind the schedule. Project timeline, project started uh, as planned or planning at the start. If one phase is delayed, all other phases are delayed because everything is scheduled according to that and thus it takes a lot of time to determine that are we lacking. So no consistent monitoring, no consistent control actions to deploy at right point of time to overcome these devi deviations. Static requirements. Requirement cannot be changed or modified once finalized. That's another input which we have to take care of because a lot of time we do see changes happening in the requirement and waterfall didn't accommodate that. But the same parameters if compared with Agile has a lot of improvements which was based on complete analysis with details to understand that how these challenges can be improvised. So if you talk about the serialized process, here we follow iterative approach with broken tasks into small increments. So if you look at the graph on your right, it also shows the same thing that we don't want to build everything at a time or together or just overnight. We take the bigger requirement into small chunks and try creating them small increments and also involve a lot of interaction so that we know where exactly we are heading to. If we are going wrong, it's not that we have to change the entire thing, it's just the one previous chunks which you have done can be improvised further. Planning far in advance? No. Plan for what we know and we have left sufficient allowance in our plans for what we don't know. So we only do what we understand and we leave enough space in the schedule to do the remaining undone task or talk about it in more detail with the customer to understand how exactly this can be done and then do it later. Lack of visibility. In traditional models we did, did have a lack of visibility but here we have very clear visibility of each activity with better collaboration. So that is where we talk about the transparency, putting the activities in a common portal so that everyone can see how the things are progressing and where we need to come into action. Project timeline, it allows the development effort to get feedback from the customer throughout to be on schedule. So a consistent response and early feedbacks and frequent feedbacks from the customer can help you to be on time and schedule. So we can overcome the schedule barrier as well when talking about the traditional compared to Agile. And static requirements, of course, scope is never closed. Continual reassessment of the requirement priorities by the business are done in Agile. So Agile helps you to accept changes even late in the life cycles and allows you to just make sure that you meet the expectations of the customer at the end of the day. 
and that's really very important which makes your customer more happy and at least be aware of how the things are being processed progressing so here is just a new intro and the first look of the agile where we're talking about being rapid being adaptable being quality driven iterative cooperative and agile has a lot of such principles to talk about and a very big manifesto to understand if you understand everything about the manifesto and the principles you know how agile works in the industry and thus it's just not a process it's a philosophy or set of values which we follow in agile methodology that's all on this particular tutorial should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'll be always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning